I first came across Bacon when I was in the, in the art library in the um, Leeds City Art Gallery. I suppose Bacon's more like, like a kind of hero or somebody who's sort of survived a lot, whereas I think with a lot of artists you kind of get into them and then you go off them, whereas Bacon I've always consistently you know, loved his paintings and loved how they work. But when I first came into contact with Bacon I was kind of painting and I, I kind of gave up because all my paintings were like bad Bacons. But I think all kids, all students go through a period with Bacon where you just, you know, he becomes your favourite I think quite early on because there's no one really like him. I think he took it to a new level. Yeah. But my, the, the ones I like probably more of them in the, tri the larger triptychs. I mean, like in this painting, the, uh, when you look up close, it just dissolves into a kind of abstract painting. And it, it makes you think of uh, the, the horror of how fragile we are, I guess, or something like that. But yeah, I mean, these, these were probably my favourite paintings when I was a kid. This one and that one, the two. Crucifixions, and probably the central panel of that one is the most terrific and the most I remember. You know, paint is pretty visceral. It does look like you know, it's like there's a, that like that splat of the head of the of the brush is definitely like brains. And the little circle around a piece of paint that makes it look like an eye. I think all great paintings look, have to look from a distance. They have to, you know, look kind of representational. But then when you get close, that needs to dissolve. So you just so you know that it's your your mind sort of creating the horror, the viewer's mind, rather than you know the artist's ability. But you know these paintings, it's like I mean this is like a powerhouse of a painting. Really, it's like you know it's unbelievable, and it really makes you think that we are here for a good time, not a long time. It's, you know, we're made of fragile stuff. Bacon paintings are always enigmatic and they, get, they hit you on a kind of gut level. So they always, you know, they always kind of shock you or they always shock me when, they, when, you, know, when you get them first of all. As an artist, I mean, my work as well, you just look for universal triggers. So you're always looking for something that will trigger something rather than an actual, you know, interpretation. After you walk away from a painting like this, you know, it, it stays in your mind for a long time afterwards, you know, days if not years. I think he liked one piece that I made, but um, I mean, I suppose if I was being really brutal, I'd say that my work could be divided. In, you know, I'd say I made four good pieces, and Bacon probably only liked the one piece, which was the fly piece. But then that was me sort of trying to do a, a three-dimensional Bacon painting, because you know, because obviously I was thinking of Bacon very early on, um, and then so I went, when I went into sculpture, I and mean, I think that was directly in relation or in reaction to, to Bacon's work. And then I got a call from the Sarcher Gallery that said he'd been in the, in the gallery and stood in front of the piece for an hour, but I don't know if... The, I, well, I never thought it was true, but then a letter surfaced recently where he said he'd seen a sculpture by me and that it worked. But, you know, for, from, from Francis Bacon, who notoriously didn't praise people, that's quite a big thing to say, I reckon. So these paintings I really love, the heads. I saw this when I was a student somewhere. Maybe it was in a museum or a group shop. But I remember looking and seeing the, the ear on it and seeing it, it painted the ear so many times that it actually becomes three-dimensional. So it's like, a re, it's like a real ear. It has this whole shape of an ear, like the ridges in it are the same as an ear. And I remember being shocked that a painting can, you know, like the illusion of a painting is a, is a, is a two-dimensional thing. So it can become a three-dimensional thing. And it's like a ghost, and it's alive, and it's dead. But I just love all you know, all the things it raises, of, you know, and it's and it's uh, kind of pulls you in in some way. You can't look at it, and you can't not. I think Bacon's on his own, really. Within you know, in the you know, I mean, he had a very very dark view of the world. You know, I mean, I'd hope that I was maybe more of a more of an optimistic person. But you know, I mean, I would get, I mean, I definitely get dark moments where I look at the world, you know, in in the way that Bacon did. And that's probably why I loved Bacon paintings was when I first saw them. They reminded me of sort of spaces I'd imagined in nightmares, which is why it's great.